What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to start an Amazon FBA business. This is a business that you guys can start from anywhere in the world with just a laptop. We will talk about what Amazon FBA is, how it works, how you can make your own custom products to sell, and everything you need to do to grow and run a profitable FBA business. Let's begin. First, let's talk about what Amazon FBA is and how it works. As you guys know, Amazon is one of the biggest companies in the world. Over 50% of all items sold online are sold on Amazon.com. What many people don't know is that the majority of items being sold on Amazon are sold by third-party sellers like you and me. So chances are whenever you buy something on Amazon, you're buying the items from a private seller or business that's using the Amazon platform to sell their products. It's rare to buy items directly from Amazon. The cool thing is that anyone can become a seller on Amazon and start a business selling their own custom products just like this seller right here. As you guys know, Amazon is extremely popular for their super fast shipping. You can order a product on Amazon and most of the time it will arrive the same or next day. So how does Amazon do this? About 10 years ago, Amazon came out with a program called Fulfilled by Amazon, which basically means that Amazon sellers can ship their items in bulk to Amazon and Amazon will take care of shipping the items to the customers and dealing with returns. This is very beneficial because that way sellers don't have to spend time shipping their items or hiring people and instead they can focus on expanding their business and making new products to sell. So what Amazon started doing is building fulfillment warehouses in most large cities and states in the US. When an Amazon seller sends their products to Amazon, it will go to a couple warehouses and then Amazon will take the shipment and break it up and send it to pretty much every warehouse across the country. So when a customer orders a product from Amazon, they will get it in a day or two because the product will ship from a warehouse that's already close to the city where they live. The cool thing about having an Amazon business is that you can run this business from anywhere in the world with just a laptop. You don't have to store products in your home or need to have a warehouse. You can make products in China and have them send the items directly to the Amazon warehouse. As a matter of fact, you never need to see the items you're making besides the sample. You can do this from anywhere in the world and you don't even have to be a US citizen. You don't even need to be 18 years old. Let's talk about how to start an Amazon FBA business. The first thing we're going to do is go on sellercentral.com and sign up for a Seller Central account. This is the main page for Amazon sellers. It's different from the amazon.com website. Just so you guys know, you will need a credit card to sign up for a seller account. You cannot use a debit card. If you don't have credit, don't worry. You can go to capitalone.com and get a secured credit card. You can use that to make your account. You do not need to have a company, a business license, or anything else to become an Amazon seller. You will simply need your social security number if you're in the US or your passport number if you're overseas. You can change your account to a business account anytime. When you guys sign up for a Seller Central account, you will have two options. To sign up for a regular free account or to sign up for a professional account. The professional account costs $40 a month. Free accounts are for people that sell products that are already in the Amazon catalog. So for example, if you're a wholesaler and get items for cheap to resell, or if you're someone who goes to Walmart and buys something from the discount section and resells it on Amazon for a higher price, you don't need a pro account because those items are already in the Amazon catalog. You would simply click the page for that product and click sell yours. What we need to do is make a pro seller account because we will be making and selling our own private label products. So what does private label mean? Private label means that we will have our own logo and brand name for our products. Now, don't worry guys, the logo and brand name do not need to be legally registered or trademarked. This is something that we will simply make on Photoshop. You can have hundreds of categories of products that you sell and have a different brand and logo for each category. We will need to make our products and make a page for that product on the Amazon website. This can only be done with a professional account. I recommend you guys go ahead and open up a free account right now. And whenever you're ready to make your first product, you can always upgrade to a pro account. Also, just so you guys know, making products in China takes a few months. So even if you sign up right now for a pro account today and don't sell anything, you can write to Amazon and they will refund you the monthly fees until your product arrives at the Amazon warehouse and it's ready to sell. All right, guys, let's talk about one of the most important things when it comes to selling on Amazon, and that's ranking. We will talk about how to make products in a second, but first let's talk about ranking products on Amazon. Ranking products to the first page of Amazon is one of the most important parts of any Amazon business. 90% of all sales made on Amazon come from the first page. The majority of sales come from the items that are on the top of the first page. Most people that shop on Amazon never click on the second page or further. It is super important to have your items on the top of the first page of Amazon and to have them stay there. So for example, if we type in foam roller into the catalog, the majority of the items that are being sold are coming from the first few listings that are on the top of the page. We will talk more about this later in the video. Let's talk about BSR. BSR stands for Best Seller Rank. Every item that is in the Amazon catalog will have a BSR number at the bottom of the page. The lower the BSR number, the better. The lower the number is, the more items that item is selling in that category. So if the BSR is 1, that item is the number 1 seller in that category. Anything under 10,000 is good, and anything under 1,000 is usually selling over 100 units a day. Your goal when selling on Amazon is to have this number be as low as possible and be in the group of best sellers or lowest numbers in that category. We will talk about how to do this later in the video. 
All right guys, let's talk about how to make products. Before we get into this, let's talk about the types of products to avoid. When we start an Amazon FBA business, our goal is to build a long-term business. It's not to make a quick buck and have a ton of headaches. The first type of product we never want to sell on Amazon is anything counterfeit. So for example, fake Gucci belts and Nikes is a good way to have your account banned before you even get started. The next type of product we want to avoid is consumables. These can be dangerous and Amazon will require your stuff to get approved by the FDA. It's a whole process, so avoid this. Next, I suggest you guys stay away from electronics. Now you guys can make these, but my personal preference is to avoid them. A lot of times if you don't deal with a major manufacturer, these items are made unprofessionally and can cause things such as fires. The next thing to avoid is anything unlicensed, such as NBA, NFL, MLB, and NHL products. Amazon will require a license the second you guys list these. And if you don't have one, they will take your listing down. Next, avoid any adult products. I suggest you guys also avoid seasonal products. Our goal is to have consistent and predictable sales year round. Avoid trendy products such as fidget spinners. Again, we want to focus on products that can get consistent sales and make consistent income. And we want to avoid products that have patents. You guys can check if a product has a patent by going to Google Patents. Since I'm using my foam roller set as an example for this video, let me tell you guys a quick story. Alright guys, so when I first made this foam roller set, I was one of the first before all the other sellers started flooding the market with the same thing. I originally made the set with a foam roller that looked like this. After selling a bunch of them, the patent owner contacted Amazon and I was forced to take it down. The reason for this was because this foam roller design was patented. Now I wasn't going to scrap this product, so I just went ahead and remade it with a regular cylinder foam roller. Another example since we're talking about fitness stuff is suspension straps such as TRX. These have a bunch of patents on them, so avoid them. Before you guys make products, always do your research and make sure a product is not patented. Next, we want to avoid super saturated products such as resistant bands and products that are not unique. And obviously avoid any products that are restricted and violate the Amazon TOS. The kind of products I suggest you guys do make are products that people actually need. So for example, a foam roller set is something that most people use. People need foam rollers. Athletes use foam rollers, people working out of the home use foam rollers, and rehab centers use foam rollers as well. I've had many orders where someone opened up a gym and ordered 20 foam roller sets. You want to make products that people need and make them better than the competition, and also make them better than the stuff that's available on Amazon. There are many ways to make products better than the competition. One example is to just have an overall better product than the competition by bringing something new to the market. Another way is to bundle your product with something else that a customer might need and to make it have more value to the buyer. These are obviously just examples, I will get into how to do this in other videos. Let's talk about how to make your own private label products on Alibaba.com. Alibaba is a Chinese website that has a bunch of suppliers and manufacturers. Alibaba itself does not sell anything just like eBay doesn't sell anything. eBay has a bunch of sellers selling stuff. Alibaba has a bunch of suppliers and manufacturers that produce all kinds of products no matter what industry you're in. So if you want to make clothes, you go to an Alibaba clothing manufacturer. If you want to make kitchen accessories, you find manufacturers for that. If you want to make fitness products, you find a manufacturer who makes fitness products. Also, I don't want you guys to confuse Alibaba with AliExpress. AliExpress has a bunch of Chinese sellers who sell individual products for dropshipping. Alibaba.com is a list of suppliers and manufacturers. These are two separate sites. So the first thing you're going to do is go on Alibaba.com and sign up for a free account. Alright guys, now Alibaba has suppliers, which can sometimes just be middlemen who are not real factories. It can be a single person or small company who looks for US customers and then goes to the real factories to get the product manufactured. Then there are manufacturers, who are the actual factories who make the products. What you want to do is work with factories so that you don't pay middlemen extra money. So say we want to make a foam roller set just like this one right here. Let's talk about how we're going to do that. Alright guys, so we're going to go on Alibaba.com and we're going to type in foam roller set. Click search and right here you will see a bunch of results with different manufacturers and suppliers let's scroll down so this one right here looks like the set we're trying to make let's click on this all right so the first thing we're going to look for is to make sure the supplier is verified make sure every supplier you deal with has this right here the second thing we want to look for is this little gold crown right here this is trade assurance this means that if anything goes wrong with your order Alibaba will cover it here you can see how many years the supplier has been on Alibaba this is how many transactions they have so these prices right here we're going to ignore because a lot of times these manufacturers and suppliers, they put low prices to try to lure customers in. Let's scroll down. Now, one very important thing to look for is to make sure the supplier accepts PayPal. Usually if a supplier accepts PayPal, this means you're dealing with a legit supplier. Let's scroll down. And here you guys can see what kind of products the supplier and manufacturer offers. And here they have info about their company. Let's talk about how to contact Chinese suppliers. First, keep in mind the time difference. You guys should contact the suppliers Monday through Friday, starting at around 9 a.m. China time. So usually you will be doing this at night if you're in the US. 
Next, never use the contact supplier button. You're always gonna use the chat now button. Let's click the chat now button. And so this is what you guys are gonna do. A lot of people have a format. You're going to tell the supplier or manufacturer that you're a large Amazon FBA seller and that you're interested in forming a long-term business relationship with them and not just placing one order where they make a lot of money off of you. So what you guys are going to do is get a picture of the item you want to make and save the image and then you're gonna send it to the Chinese manufacturer. So you guys will write out something similar to this right here and you're gonna let them know that you want to ship DDP. DDP means all duties paid. So that means that's the landing price. That's the complete price with shipping, customs fees, taxes, and everything else. And you're gonna attach the picture of the foam roller set. What you're going to do is copy this. You're gonna attach the picture and you're gonna send it to them. And after this, what you're going to do is you're gonna go through all these suppliers, hit the chat now button, attach the picture, paste the same thing, and send it to all of them. So you're gonna send this to around 10 to 15 different suppliers. All right guys, so let me show you an example of one of my conversations with the manufacturer. Now remember, when you talk to Chinese manufacturers, always make sure you use simple English. Don't make it too hard for them. Just keep things very, very simple. You don't have to use proper grammar. So I showed them a picture of what I want made. This is the exact picture right here. She said there's going to be a color difference. Is that okay? I said, yes, that's fine. I need them to be green. She asked me how many sets do you require? I said 2,000. And right here, she gave the price, 7.8 US dollars. Now guys, remember, you always have to negotiate. So I told her that there's a lot of people selling on China. There's a lot of competition. I need the price to be lower. And I let her know that I could place larger orders. They're going to say that they're going to ask their boss. This is very common. And then she offered $7.4. And what you guys want to do is keep negotiating. Now, one very important rule when you make FBA products is that you have to make products that will have at least a $10 profit margin. So Amazon has a tool called the FBA calculator, which will let us calculate our seller fees. So we're going to go into Google, type in FBA calculator and click this right here. We will use this set as an example because it's very similar to ours. So we're going to type in the name of this set. So we're going to type in Keshi Foam Roller Set. Hit search. Now he's selling it for $31.99. So let's put that in. And let's say our purchase price is going to be $7.40. Click calculate. And right here you'll see he's making approximately $9.41 per set. Now obviously he's getting the set for less than $7.40. So he's making more than $10. But you guys can use this free tool to calculate your seller fees. So say he's making around $10 per sale and he's selling around 20 pieces a day, that's $200 off of one product. That's $6,000 a month just off one product. Your goal when starting an FBA business is to make a ton of products. So imagine you guys have 100 products like this. You can do the math. All right, so how do you guys make sure that these suppliers give you legit prices and you don't overpay? Let me show you a little trick. We're gonna go on a website called 1688.com. This is basically a website of Chinese factories and manufacturers. This is the Chinese version of Alibaba. This is where the Chinese suppliers and middlemen go and purchase their stuff and resell to US customers. Now this website is completely in Chinese or Mandarin, but let me show you guys a little trick. We're gonna go into Google, type in Google Chrome, and download the Google Chrome browser. We're going to open up Google Chrome, type in 1688.com, and what you will see on the right right here is a little tab that's gonna pop up and it's gonna give us the option to convert it into English. We're gonna click on English, and now we're going to type in foam roller, Hit search. So right here, you guys will see the results. You will notice that all of the prices are in Chinese yuan. So what we're going to do is open up a new tab, type in US dollar to yuan. And here you'll be able to convert. So for example, this foam roller right here costs 9.9 .9 yuan. Let's type that in. And that's equivalent to $1.52. So you guys can browse 1688, do your research and make sure you get a fair price. Once you find the price which you're comfortable with, the next step is to place a sample order. You guys will pay anywhere from $50 to $100 for a sample. Make sure you only pay for the sample with PayPal. Never use Western Union, Bitcoin, or wire transfers. A sample should take about a week or two to arrive. When you guys receive the sample, make sure the quality is up to par. You guys can also get several samples from a few different manufacturers to compare quality. Also, if you do place an order with the supplier, they will deduct the sample cost from your full order cost. So the sample will basically be free. So for example, if you paid $50 for a sample and the total order price is $1,000, you will have to pay $9.50 because you already paid $50. After that, you will tell the manufacturer all the details of your order. You will send them your logos, any box artwork, any paper artwork, and anything else you need done such as custom colors. Let me show you guys an example. So for my logo, I made a simple FK logo which stands for Fitness Kings. You guys can easily make logos like this on Photoshop or get someone to make a logo for you using websites such as Etsy and Fiverr.com. You will tell them all the details 
details of what goes where. So for my foam roller set, I told them to put the FK logo on the side of the foam roller, as you guys can see right here. I also told them where to put the other logos on all the other items that are in the set. I also sent them PDF files of the fitness guide artwork. Let me show you guys how to easily get these made. You should never hire people for photo shoots unless you absolutely have to. The trick is to go on the website called iStock.com and get all the photos you need here. You pay one time for the photo and you can use it as many times as you want. The photos cost around $10. So I purchased the photos that I needed and came up with a fitness guide. If you guys want to make box artwork, the process is the same. You will simply get the files you need on iStock, then make your artwork or get someone from Fiverr.com to make the artwork for you. Here is an example of another set that I made and you can see the digital files used for the set here. And right here you guys can see what the printed box looks like. I simply found the fitness photos that I needed on iStock.com and made the design on Photoshop. If the sample quality is good and the price is good, and you want to proceed with the order, you will send all the details of what you need and you will contact the supplier and let them know that you're ready to place an order. Let's talk about how ordering works on Alibaba. When you place an order, you will pay 30% as a down payment for the manufacturer to begin production on your order. The manufacturer will send you a link and you will pay the 30%. Always pay this amount with a credit card, never pay through wire transfer. Production will take about a month and shipping will also take two weeks to a month if shipped by vessel. When production is done, the manufacturer will let you know they're done, show you pictures of all the units, and you will pay the remaining 70% and they will ship out your order. Once production is done, you can also pay Alibaba around $100 and they will do an inspection of the order to make sure everything looks correct. They will send the person down to the factory and they will inspect the finished production and make sure it matches to what was agreed upon in the order. Let's talk about how shipping works. There are two main ways to ship products from China to the US. If you have light or small items and it will take several boxes to ship, you will ship through airmail. There are two main ways to ship through the air, standard air and express air. Standard air goes through passenger airplanes and is slower and will take a few weeks. And express air is shipped by UPS, DHL or FedEx and will arrive in 3-5 to five days. Make sure you tell the supplier to declare the value of each box under $600 so that you don't have to pay customs fees after your products arrive. If you are sending out stuff that is large or heavy, or that has a bunch of boxes, you will have to send through the sea by a vessel. This is called sea shipping. Sea shipping will be cheaper most of the time. If you guys ship from China to Long Beach port, it will take the vessel around 2 weeks to arrive. If it's going to a port on the east coast, such as New York, it will have to go through the Panama Canal and that will take about a month. You can track the vessel by using a website called marinetracker.com. You will simply enter the ship name and marine traffic will track it by satellite and tell you exactly where it is. When your order is shipped by vessel, the supplier will give you a paper called the Bill of Lading, also known as the BOL. This will contain all the shipping info that you need such as the ship name and the container number. You can also track all of the info about the shipment and the status using a free app called Crooks Systems. This app will show you everything such as the estimate arrival date and what the status of the container is. After the vessel arrives at the port, it will take around 2 weeks until it reaches the Amazon warehouse. The goods will be transported to a warehouse to unpack the container and then sent to rail or the Amazon warehouse by truck. The logistics company will have to schedule delivery date with Amazon. Let's talk about the two types of container loads you can have. You can have a LTL or a FCL container load. FCL means full container load, meaning the entire container is filled with only your product. LTL means less than container load. This means that your items are going to be shipped with other people's products and will need to go to a special warehouse for repackaging prior to being delivered to the Amazon warehouse. Most shipments will be shipped by LTL. The only time you will have FCL shipments is when you order a lot of products to fill up an entire container. Let's talk about the different shipping ways and what they mean. When you guys negotiate production with the manufacturer, you will have to figure out who will do all of the logistics of the shipping and who will be paying for the shipping. When starting out, always do DDP shipping. This stands for all duties paid. This means the supplier will pay for all shipping and you you don't have to pay any customs fees or any other kind of fees. Everything will be completely paid for from their factory to the Amazon warehouse. But just so you guys understand what it means, let me explain the most common types of shipping. EXW means X works. This means that the manufacturer will get the goods off of their factory warehouse ramp and you will be responsible for arranging all trucking to the vessel, the vessel shipping, customs fees when it arrives to the US and arranging delivery to the Amazon warehouse. FOB means freight on boat. This means the supplier will arrange everything in China to get the goods to the vessel and you are responsible for arranging everything when the vessel arrives in the US. These two are definitely something all beginners to FBA should avoid. That, which is mostly commonly referred to as DDU, means duties unpaid. This means the supplier will arrange the shipping to the freight warehouse and you will be responsible for customs fees and delivery to the Amazon warehouse. And DDP means all duties paid for, which means you don't have to worry about any part of the shipping process 
everything will be completely covered from the China factory to the goods arriving to the Amazon warehouse and being ready to sell. Always send DDP so you don't have to deal with any headaches when you're first starting out. The next step when production is finished is to have the manufacturer send the products to the Amazon warehouse. Right after the supplier is done with production, you will have to create the Amazon listing and send product SKU labels to the manufacturer so that they can glue them onto each item so that when the shipment arrives at the Amazon warehouse, Amazon can scan it and link everything to your listing. Let's talk about how to create a listing. The first thing you guys will need to do is to buy UPC barcodes. In order to make a product page for a private label product on Amazon, you need to have GS1 barcodes. A GS1 barcode is a registered barcode that can be scanned and is in the computer database. Pretty much every item that is sold in the store has a UPC barcode. These barcodes cost about $25 and the more you buy, the less they will cost. The cool thing is that you guys can go on the website like barcodemania.com and buy a barcode for $5 or less. The more barcodes you buy, the cheaper they will be. Websites like barcodesmania.com buy barcodes from GS1 for very cheap and then they resell them. You can get barcodes for as little as a few dollars. Let's talk about the differences between SKUs and ASINs. A SKU is the number which Amazon will scan at the Amazon warehouse. An ASIN is the Amazon number of the Amazon catalog page. So you guys will hear these two words very often in this business. And to keep it simple, a SKU is a stock keeping unit. This is for the Amazon warehouse to keep track of your inventory. And the ASIN refers to the Amazon catalog page for your product. So if you guys ever run into any issues with any of your products on Amazon, they will ask you for your ASIN number and they can fix the problem for you. It's basically like a social security number for your Amazon product. All right guys, so say you pay the 30% down to start production on your order. The next thing we're going to do is create a listing for your product. Let's talk about how to create a listing for your product in the Amazon catalog. All right guys, so we're gonna click on catalog, add products. We're gonna click on, I'm adding a product not sold on Amazon. Right here where it says search for categories, since our product is a foam roller, we're gonna type in foam roller. Hit search. And right here you guys see the category that pops up is sports and outdoors, foam rollers. Click select category. So right here, we're going to type in the UPC code that we got from Barcodes Mania. And right here, we're gonna select UPC. All right guys, now here for the product name, this is where things get interesting. You can just call your product a foam roller set. That's not how Amazon works. You need to make an optimized listing. One of the most important parts of having a successful product on Amazon is to create an optimized listing. Optimized means that there are plenty of keywords so customers can find our products. The more people see our product, the higher chance we have of getting a sale. We want our product to rank for many different keywords, not just foam roller or foam roller set. We want it to rank for massage stick, massage ball, yoga strap, and more. When someone types these words or phrases into Amazon search, we want these to show up on the first page as well. So if someone is looking for a massage stick and our set pops up on the first page of the search, they might choose our set over just a plain massage stick. Because with our set, they get more items for a cheaper price and our set has more value. So the more keywords we rank for, the more sales we will get. So right here on the product name or the listing title, we want to squeeze in as many keywords as we can. So basically our title should look something like this. As you guys can see, we have a couple keywords here. We have foam roller, we have foam roller set, we have exercise set, we have massage stick, spiky massage ball, deep tissue massage ball, yoga strap, home gym, and Pilates. Now since we made our brand name Fitness Kings, the brand name and manufacturer are going to be the same. We don't have any variations. For the offer price, we can change this anytime. Now for the description, again, we're going to put in as many keywords as we can. And we're going to do the same for the product features. I suggest you guys make these at least a paragraph each. Now we're gonna click on the keywords tab and right here these search terms are known as the backend keywords. Right here we're going to add more keywords if we need to, but also what we're gonna do here is add our competitors brand names. So for example, if this is one of our competitors right here, we're gonna type in invisible fitness in the backend keywords. So anytime someone clicks on his product page, our listing is also going to show up. Now part of having an optimized listing is also having professional photos. When your product arrives at the Amazon warehouse, you can send it to a professional photographer, get about five to six photos done, pay them and have them email you the files. The first main picture has to have a white background. That's Amazon's rule. So you guys can go on the website such as productphotography.com, send them your product. If your product is cheap, they can keep the product. They're gonna take professional photos of your product. As you guys can see, the photos look great here. And when they're done, they're simply going to send you back the file and you can list it on Amazon. All right guys, so we're gonna go on iStockphoto.com. We're gonna type in foam roller, hit search. And right here, you guys can see a bunch of images pop up and you guys can easily use these for your Amazon images to make them look professional. You don't have to pay for these. Next, when production is done, the manufacturer will let us know and we will have to send them labels to label each product and box labels to label each box. 
we need to do this so that when the products arrive at the Amazon warehouse, Amazon can scan them and they can link the products to our account and add to our inventory. Let's talk about how to do this. You're going to click on inventory. You're going to find your product. You're going to click on the arrow and you're going to click on send replenish inventory. Now, the first thing you guys will see right here is the ship from address. This has to be the manufacturer's address. So you're going to contact the manufacturer and ask them for their address. Next, you're going to ask the manufacturer how many boxes are being shipped and how many units are in each box. So for example, if we have 100 units and there's 10 units in each box, we're gonna have to send them 10 boxes. You're gonna click ready to send. The next step is to print the SKU labels. You're gonna click on print SKU labels right here. You're going to enter the amount of labels you need. So if you have 100 products as an example, you're gonna put in 100 and you're gonna hit print. After that, you will take this PDF file. This is what the PDF file is going to look like. You're gonna take this PDF file, hit file, export as PDF, save it to your desktop, and then you're gonna email this file to the manufacturer. You're going to click confirm and continue. You're going to select the approximate shipping date. This does not have to be exact. And right here, since this item is being shipped from China to the US, you're going to select other. Now this shipment is just an example. There's going to be no charges. You're also going to enter the weight and the size of each box. You will get this info from the manufacturer. You're going to click accept charges and confirm shipment. After that, it will give you an option to print the shipping labels. You're going to download that file, save the PDF, and again, you're going to send it to the manufacturer. After this, the manufacturer will send out your products and when they arrive to Amazon, you will get an email notification. The next step is to rank our products. This is one of the most important parts of any Amazon FBA business. Let's talk about how ranking on Amazon works. Ranking is basically how close we are to the first product on top of the first page. So for example, if we type in foam roller and take a look at the top of the first page, these items are getting the majority of the sales. What we want is for our product to be in front of these items when someone types in foam roller. It's the same thing for any other keyword such as massage stick. If someone types in massage stick into Amazon and our set shows up, there's a higher chance that someone will buy our product instead of one massage stick if the price is not that much more. So we need to rank for a bunch of different keywords. Our main ones are going to be foam roller and foam roller set. The way ranking works is if someone types in foam roller into Amazon and purchases your item over someone else's, consistently your item will rank over theirs. Amazon ranks based on sales velocity. In other words, who gets the most purchases for that keyword? And the algorithm decides where to place products so that Amazon can make more money. So to rank our product to the first page, we need to have a ton of people type in foam roller into search and buy our item over everyone else's. So how are we going to do this if our item doesn't show anywhere near the first page when someone types in foam roller? Again, this is where things get interesting. So as you guys know, most reviews on Amazon are fake. Everyone knows this. It's just unfortunately part of the game. Sellers set up systems to get reviews. It's against policy, but you won't be able to compete otherwise. You have to compete if you want to be in this business. The first thing you're going to do is get some family and friends to type in foam roller and the name of your brand into search. This way your product will show up right away. They will buy your product. When this happens, you will partially rank for foam roller and your item will soon start popping up in the catalog on the last pages. After it pops up on the last pages, you will then tell your friends to simply type in foam roller without the name brand and scroll to those last pages and buy the item and then leave a review. Your item will slowly start showing up closer to the first page. We need to rank and have some social proof that we have a good item before we start getting organic and real sales. Social proof simply means good reviews so that when your item is visible to a lot of people, they can be confident they're getting a good product and purchase your product. At first, I suggest having 10 to 15 friends buy your item and leave a positive review. Make them buy everything on the same day if possible. Make sure you do not send them the link to the product through text and also do not send through Facebook. Simply call them, tell them what to type into Amazon search and have them buy the item. When they review it, they can either keep it or give it back to you and you will give them their money back. When you have your social proof or reviews, you can then get into the next step of ranking your products and that's running PPC ads. PPC means pay-per-click ads. You can set up an ad campaign and in this ad campaign, you can set up keywords which you want your item to rank for. When listings that are ads pop up on the Amazon search, they will show with a sponsored ad written on the bottom. These are not ranked listings. These are simply people running ads. Anytime someone clicks on a sponsored ad listing, whether a customer buys or not, the seller will get charged. You will set the amount of how much you get charged per click. There's a bidding system for keywords and different keywords have different prices. The closer you want your item to show up on the top of the first page, the more you will bid. You can put daily limits on how much money you want to spend on advertising. It can be $5 or it can be $1,000. The good thing is that you can set up different keywords and if someone buys with that keyword, your item will start ranking. So for example, if you make an ad campaign for the keyword foam roller, someone who types in foam roller into the Amazon search will see your item and if they buy it, then your item will start ranking for the words foam roller. The same thing happens if someone types in massage stick or any other keyword that our title has or that we're trying to rank for. You can make different campaigns called manual campaigns where you 
can enter the keywords yourself or you can make automatic campaigns where Amazon will select the keywords for you. You can also make similar item campaigns where you will select an item such as a competitor's foam roller and anytime someone clicks on their item and they buy your item instead of theirs, Amazon will start putting your listing next to theirs or in front of them. The goal is to rank for as many keywords as possible. So for our foam roller set, we want to rank for words such as foam roller, foam roller set, massage stick, massage ball, stretch band, yoga strap, and any other fitness related keywords. It's very important to have all these keywords in your listing title, description, and backend keywords. Running PPC ads is a crucial strategy to ranking and every person who wants to have a successful product on Amazon will have to have an entry cost, meaning they will have to lose some amount of money to rank and get into the game. The amount depends on how competitive the product is. Also very important to lower your price significantly less than the competition even if that means you will lose a few dollars on the sale. It's also very important to lower your prices when you're first starting out to make sure your product is priced lower than the competition. You will most likely be losing a little bit of money on every sale when you're first starting out, but that's part of ranking. When your item starts getting organic sales and ranks to the first page, you can then slowly start turning off PPC ads. There are also ranking services that can help you rank, but I'll talk about this in a different video. It's also very important to make sure an item doesn't lose ranking once it does rank. So make sure to keep an eye out on things such as negative reviews, which can ruin your listing. The way the Amazon algorithm ranks items is based on sales velocity, meaning how many sales that item is getting per day, compared to other people's similar products. Things such as Amazon reviews and a nice optimized listing with great photos also matter. Be sure to always keep your ratings above 4.8 stars. Getting negative reviews can ruin your listing and derank your products. So always stay on top of your reviews. If somebody leaves you a negative review, contact the buyer and try to get them to remove the negative review. One of the most important things is to not lose rank. One of the easiest ways to lose rank is by running out of inventory. You have to make sure you have enough inventory in stock at all times. You have to calculate approximately how fast your item sells and when you will run out of inventory and always be on top of when you need to reorder products. I suggest you guys start your FBA business by making a few products at once instead of just making one product. Your goal is to make a portfolio of products that make you passive income. So for example, if you make 10 products and each one makes $2,000 a month, you're making $20,000 a month. You do the upfront work of creating a product and ranking it and then you have to simply maintain the listing and keep your reviews high. And of course, make sure you don't run out of inventory. The key is obviously to make good products. Every product you make won't be a home run, but if you can make a good portfolio of products, you will build a very solid business. You guys can also use software such as Jungle Scout to do product research. I'll talk about that in a different video. Now, one more thing I want to say, just like in any other business, you guys will run into different problems and have different kinds of headaches. Anyone who tells you to buy a $500 course and tells you you'll be successful after the course is straight up lying to you. Every business has all kinds of problems, but those problems are necessary because they will make you sharper and more thorough. Alright guys, these are the basics of how to start an Amazon FBA business. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one.